fairy friends, me again. All right, so fun, fun, fun. My kid's having a field day and they've got, like literally it's called field day at their school. You remember field day, track and field day? It's like so way better now because they've got like, fucking, they've got like a, uh, uh, inflatable they got a bouncy house they got slide they got games like do you remember when we had track and field day yeah you just ran it you just fucking ran like no nah, man like this shit's fun like this shit's fun so it'd be good it's it's, it's good to be a kid nowadays <laughs> field day is actually a field day woohoo <laughs> All right, so let's crack into your reading, okay? So, my little guy's having a grand old time. So I'm gonna sit in this car here and bring you a reading while he runs around and has fun. What do we got for the fairy friends today? Ooh, oh, I paid that. No. Oh. Damn, man, expect to lose something of value. Listen, whatever this is that you're going to lose, it's going to be the kind of thing where you lose something. You've been holding on to something that you think is valuable. And once you lose this thing, you're going to experience a degree of liberation. Let me tell you, let me explain to you what I meant. What I mean. So I've got this friend, right? And, uh, he was having a hell of a rough time um, back in the hometown, right? And so uh, me and my husband, fucking, we brought him up to, you know, where we were at, a little more metropolitan place, okay? And um, he started doing pretty good for himself. Well, one thing he's always had with him from, like, the last 10, 20 years or whatever, believe it or not, is a computer, right? And man, he loved his computer. He's a super tech guy. So if anybody could have a computer for 10, 15 years, it's this dude. Okay. <laughs> um, like he can gut, he can gut a machine out and rewire it. And you know what I mean? It's just a case is a case to this dude. So, um, anywho, but like this computer had his whole fucking life on it. Like it had pictures back from high school and middle school and this and that and the other. And, 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 and it was weighing him down because he's homeless, right? Like he didn't have anywhere to stay at this point. And he's just got to lug this computer around computer, lugging it, lugging it, lugging it around. Right. Well, then he hooks up with this one chick and she's a scumbag to be sure. Um, she stole all of his shit, right? Like she, including his computer, and at first, he was devastated, remember? Something of value, okay? At first, he was devastated. But after he had time to process the loss, after a couple of days, he processed what had happened, and he realized that he was free now. Not just physically free. Like, my God, it's going to be so much easier to move from, you know, lodging to lodging to lodging when not lugging around a fucking desktop everywhere I go, but also he was mentally free from the bonds of his past, right? So if you would have told him, hey, yeah, you're going to have to lose your computer, he probably would have been like, oh my God, I'm spitting, I'm telling the truth now. He probably would have been like, oh no, man, are, are you fucking serious? Um, this is something that like, you know, you would never in a thousand years think that losing this thing would free you, but that's exactly what it's going to do. I don't know why, but like I'm getting the example of a teddy bear, like somebody you were in a relationship with gives you a teddy bear for Valentine's Day and you cherish this teddy bear. And then long after this person's already left you, moved on, found a new partner, you're still holding on to this teddy bear, right? Like, oh, the times were so good. And then all of a sudden there's like a fire or something and you lose everything, including this teddy bear. And then suddenly you realize like, Oh yeah, now I don't have a I don't have that constant reminder of the past. Oh. Oh, okay. And then suddenly you realize that that this thing our, our sentimentality uh can chain us, right? It's what locks us locks us into these cycles that um inhibit our growth and our spiritual development, right? Cuz we just can't we just can't see the forest through the trees, man. So expect to lose something of value, but it's going to be okay because the way this keeps coming up, 
I'm really thinking this is going to be one of those tough love lessons. And then a pleasant surprise awaits you. So once you lose this thing, something new is going to come in. Something, something, hey, maybe equal to or even better than, uh, I check my teeth real quick, ha, huh? than what you ever expected. You are ambitious. This keeps coming up too. You are ambitious and impatient. Be patient and you will succeed. This one keeps coming up a lot too, you guys. So be careful. Um, I pulled this in a little short that I did yesterday or maybe it was the whole video. I don't know, but I pulled this, right? You get impatient and then you hook up with the wrong people. You know what I'm saying? And this isn't just impatient and love. Like I'm picking up like this could be projects, business. You want to get something off the fucking ground and or you want to move into the next stage. And this impatience is what it's like if you was looking for a new house, no matter how. And I well, some people do like you always regret it. Everybody knows that one person. Right. Or you may even have multiple types of these people in your friend group. Fuck, you could be this person. OK. They want a new house, right? But everybody knows you don't just lay the money down on the first house you see. You know what I mean? But we all know we all have people in our lives who we know would do exactly that. They get this um, scarcity mentality. That's what it is. They get this scarcity mentality where it's like... They think they got to take the first thing that's offered to them. Otherwise, they're, they're going to miss out. And, and this is pretty common, I think. I would assume I, I'm from the working class. This is pretty common among working class people. We take the first thing that we find because we don't... When you don't have money, you don't have options. You know what I'm saying? Like, your standards are low. Sure, we'll buy the first house that we see that we can afford because, you know, it's a house. <laughs> so, um, you are ambitious and you are impatient, all right? You really, really, really want something, but you need to... You need to slow the fuck down. Like, you need to vet people. You, am I making sense here? You need to vet people. Right? Think of a rock band. You're just going to take the first drummer that shows up. And, okay, let's go on tour now. No, you're going to vet them. You're going to take the first bassist that comes up. Okay, let's go on tour now. No, you're going to vet her. You're going to take the first vocalist that shows up. Okay, let's go on tour now. No. <laughs> you're going to vet this person, right? You're going to make them audition. You're going to try out a couple different bassists, drummers, vocalists, because you want to find the one that fits with you, right? So uh, don't be afraid to turn people away if you have to. That's all that's saying. And don't feel like, oh, I got to take th this, this partner on or this collaborator on because what if nothing else comes my way? Spirit's telling you, no, no, no. A pleasant surprise awaits you. Okay, let's pull some tarot. <laughs> you wouldn't take the first guitarist that showed up. Blink, blink, blink. Okay, you're in. <laughs> Better take this one. We don't know if we're going to get another one. <laughs> you see what I'm getting at now, don't you? Okay, great. Scarcity mentality, maybe? Could this be your energy? Could this be your energy a little bit? Just asking. Looking at them two swords like, oh, do I need to take them? Taking on too much. Taking on too many things that potentially are not useful to you. Okay, go watch The Jerk. I talk about that movie. It's been a minute since I've seen that movie. There's a scene in this movie. It's an old Steve Martin flick. There's a scene uh, in The Jerk where they're losing all their wealth, right? Like they're, like they're getting sued. They're fucking losing everything. And uh, his wife, his girl's pissed. And she's just like, just go. Just take whatever you can 
take whatever you can carry and go. And, uh, like, he's just grabbing everything he fucking sees. Like, I'll take this chair. I'll take this lamp. I'll take this book. <laughs> like, he's not taking clothes, food, you know. He's just taking shit, right? Because he can't, he can't prioritize in the moment, right? That's what this is. You, you need to prioritize in the moment. Okay, expect to lose something of value. I'm really getting called to pull the index, so that's what I'm going to do. We'll come back to the tarot. But I'm, th I'm picking up that Seven of Swords might be your energy. Just, just might be. And that, you know what? You just need to learn to prioritize in these kinds of situations. Easier said than done, right? Expect to lose something of value, prosperity. Fuck. <laughs> so you're going to lose some money, it looks like. Or you're going to lose a, um, something like a business proposition. Let's see. Time frame, hurtful, Virgo, Jupiter. You're going to have good luck nonetheless. Time frame and hurtful. Somebody's been hurting you for a really long time. We'll keep pulling. Now look at this though. Jupiter. That's luck. So I don't know who this Virgo is or if this is energy. I think I pulled these. Yeah, see this is the thing that's gonna be lost. Is it this? Ah! Is it this Virgo? Is this a Virgo reading? This might be a Virgo reading. Heartbreak. Damn, man. Um. You may have turned away somebody, or somebody may have turned you away. Somebody may have um. You may have been hurtful to somebody or somebody may have been hurtful to you. But don't worry because luck, this luck is on this situation side. Somebody's going to lose out on maybe like a profitable deal, a business deal, but it's going to end up being a good thing. It's, you know what I'm saying? Because this could be like a, like that liberation I'm talking about. It's like to lose something of value. Did you see that? There's a breeze, but they caught it. It just flew right out. Security. Hmm. Okay. Security. Somebody's not looking at a deal or at a prospect meant to be. Somebody's not looking at this situation because it was meant to be they're looking they're looking at this prospect um because they think it's going to give them security right so they're going to lose this prospect so that they realize that that they they're the they're the ones that make it happen you know what i'm saying am i making sense it's not any one deal it's not any one contract it's them whoever this person is this person has the midas touch i hope i'm reading this right sleeping a pleasant surprise awaits you sleeping you're gonna get some fucking sleep virgo because <laughs> i'm sleep virgo <laughs> i'm not playing with you <laughs> assessment yeah somebody could also feel like they've been sleeping like they've been asleep their whole fucking life um, let's go ahead and put this stick away. So somebody feels like they've been asleep their whole life. Assessment. A pleasant surprise awaits you. So what's the assessment? What is it now? Ooh. They've been sleeping on their connections. And they've assessed that they're just not in, in commun they're not in communication with their body, mind, and soul. Perhaps that's the pleasant surprise that awaits someone. Someone's going to get in touch with their th with their three realms, right? Body, mind, and soul. The three realms of the individual. Your body, your mind, your soul. Somebody's not in touch with their realms. 
or their realms don't communicate with each other. What else we got for a pleasant surprise awaits assessment, body, mind, soul, sleeping? What else do we need to know about this? Queen of Wands. A, a sexy, witchy, fiery woman. What about this Queen of Wands? Oh, she's a lover. Okay. What about this lover? What about this Queen of Wands lover? So this could be what the connection that, that this Virgo's been sleeping on. There we go again. Yeah, somebody's been... overburdened in a scarcity mentality but now they want to manifest this queen of wands back into their life like that's their wish is for her see she's the queen and then he this this masculine wants to be the king right so see how he's got his wand? Like he's coming up with a plan, like a plan of action to manifest this desire that he's got. But he's got these emotional burdens, physical burdens, and he's got his mental landscape. Um, Ace of Swords, Ace of Cups. Yeah, he probably doesn't realize... Uh, how free he is? Is that my making sense? His priorities! He's having trouble... Okay, yeah. He's been having trouble prioritizing. There we go. See what I mean? Prioritizing. Ooh. Six of wands and nine... Somebody is being celebrated. I don't know whose energy this is. Someone is being celebrated on the outs. This could be your energy. You look very collected, very regal, very um, in control. But in reality, this is you. Like, see what I'm saying? Like, everybody wants your position. They want to be celebrated, right? They want to be held in such a high regard. But they don't know what the fuck goes behind that. All the attacks, all the projections. When our ancestors talked about the evil eye, this is what they're talking about. This is what they're talking about. It ain't just this. It's also this. How come she gets to be the one, blah, 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 blah? How come everybody thinks they're blah, 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 blah? I'm, I'm just as sweet and generous and kind as blah, 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 blah. I should be the one who everybody praises and likes. I'm ten times the saint blah, 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 blah is. She doesn't. You see what I'm getting at? Jealousy, ego, low self-esteem. Just because blah, blah, blah gets celebrated don't mean bling, bling, bling ain't good enough. It's not about that. It's a situation where somebody sees, it's like you see, you see somebody, you doll yourself all up, you think you look all pretty and good, and then you see somebody you think's prettier than you, and then all of a sudden you just feel like shit. It's one of those situations, and I'm opening up on the Hierophant. Tor it could be a Taurus Gemini, because I was holding lovers, which is Gemini. Hierophant, which I think is Taurus. I think is Taurus. One of them, anyway. A Gemini Taurus. A Taurus Gemini cusp could be doing this to you. Yeah, here's the Eight of Wands. Upheaval. Everything's always up in the air. Nothing can ever settle. Look! Look! Somebody's doing this shit. Somebody thinks they're cute. See what I'm see what I mean? Did you did you catch see what I mean? 
See? Let's put them, let's put them back up again. Let's put them back up again. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. See? See how nonchalant that witch in the blue is? While she's causing all this upheaval? That's the kind of attitude that gets karma on your ass. I'm not playing around. I'm also picking up if you only knew this, your strength. If you only knew your strength. This is also you. Like these two people could be switched like that. If you were half as malicious as this person is, whoever whoever's energy this represents, could be a fire sign, could be a Leo, but I'm picking up this could be that Gemini Taurus, either they're either in cahoots or it's someone with a, a Taurus Gemini cusp. You could flip this script so quickly, so quickly. You don't, though, because A, you're not malicious, so you don't think about it like that. And B, you probably don't even realize what the fuck's going on. My best advice when dealing with spiritual warfare, and this is dangerous advice, okay? But this is my advice. Go with it. Believe in it. Believe in yourself. Because they, the people on the other side, the people who think they're cute and clever and sexy because they do black magic, <laughs> they don't fucking doubt. Like, yeah, they're in a hell prison, by they're in a soul prison, by the way. You don't have to fucking worry about these people. That's the exact kind of fucking attitude that gets your soul locked up in prison. Have fun. Um, remember, they thought it was cute. You may even be asked, if you're an avenging angel incarnate, you may be asked to send them to this soul prison. Bum, ba, bum, bum, with your own magic. If you're praying and praying and praying for, you know, whoever has ill intent, your enemies, your rivals, whatever. If you're praying and praying and praying for these people to leave you alone, to get their just desserts, and like, you know the divine is on your side, but they're just, these people are still like being allowed to do this, and you don't understand why. Especially if you're on a twin flame journey because it's all about surrender, surrender, surrender. So you're just like, oh, why? Consider the fact that it, that <laughs> consider the fact that it's because you're an avenging angel incarnate and you have to do it. And that's also dangerous advice. But sometimes people are put in our path to help us awaken to our own spiritual duty. You know, this isn't about targeting motherfuckers. This isn't about cursing, hexing, killing motherfuckers off with black magic. Oh, no, 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 no. This is about sending it back. Okay. So, yeah, they might not be. Yep. Sending it all back. Yeah. So the reason if you're noticing this, it's probably because they want you <laughs> to stop holding back. They want you to work with them on a plan. Virgo. There you are, Virgo. There you are. <whistles> Hi. See you in there in the fucking forest? Meditating. That's you, bitch. That's you. That could also be your enemies, too. They See? Listen, this is what I mean. Okay. Thank you. This is what I mean. The enemies, the ones who go the evil, malicious route... Okay? They don't doubt themselves. They don't doubt themselves the fuck at all. That's part of the narcissism. They don't doubt themselves. If they if they think they're sending you a mental... This is how they, the magic's so effective. Because people who... I, I don't want to say the dork fight. People who turn to the malicious side... Who turn to the malicious side of magic... Are super fucking narcissistic. So of course they're going to believe that they have the power to make your wife a living hell. Of course they're going to believe that. So how do you combat that? You have to believe. They don't fucking doubt more fucking Virgo energy. Oh my God. This is definitely a Virgo reading. Um, They don't fucking doubt. They don't doubt that shit for a fucking minute. So it's time for you to stop doubting too.
See what I'm getting at? I had to learn that. I'm like, oh God, I'm getting all these down intuitive downloads. I'm probably just fucking crazy. I'm probably just, you know, I'm just cracking up. And then it was like, bink. Oh, but you've worked with malicious magicians. My situation, I work with people. I've been in a coven with people. And if they're watching, they know who the fuck they are. I've worked in a coven with people. I gave the benefit of the doubt, right? Because I'm a Wiccan. I'm, I'm light and dark. Like, I get that. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah, totally. Let, let, let's do this. I could learn some stuff from you. You could learn some stuff from me and we'll become great together, right? We, we, we were... Anyway, so in the course of working with these people, I learned a bit about them, you know. I learned a bit about them, and I know that they like to pay for magic. Um, yeah, they're a couple. They like to, they'll, they'll pay for magic. They'll fucking, you know, they got their heads stuck right up this one person's ass. I know exactly who it is because I pulled on him. Blonde hair, blue eyes. He came out as the King of Swords. And I thought to myself, yep. <laughs> Somebody doesn't want me to tell you. Uh, and so I had that backing me, right? So the reason I'm sharing this is to remind you, root, root it in reality, okay? So for my, for my instance, for my situation, I was like, wait a second, though. I know people... I physically work with people who are into this shit. I know they pay for magic. I know they pedestalize people who um, earn a living doing malicious magic. So am I really so crazy to uh, believe that I'm being given visions into their heart? Is that really so insane to believe? Because I don't think that they're doubting their visions, right? And after that, I was just like, fuck it, I'm all in. Fuck it. You know? They believe. I'm not gonna win this fucking war half assing it. Oh, maybe I do. Oh, maybe I don't. Nope. I don't question it anymore. So if you're undergoing spiritual warfare, it's like I said, it's a it's dangerous advice. Um for obvious reasons, you know, like pe there, people could be schizophrenic, right? People, you could have malicious visions, right? Um, not, not everybody who sees is sane and that's just all there is to it. Um, so please use your, you use your discretion. Hopefully you're one of the sane ones. That's all I can say. Um, yeah, go all in because your enemies don't fucking doubt. They don't fucking doubt at all. They don't doubt their fucking power. They don't doubt their magic. They don't doubt their rituals. Not not one fucking minute. Why do you? That's the only way you're going to win it. And believe me, you're in it to fucking win it. You're in it to fucking win it. And that's all there is to it. All right. Ah, this turned into a spiritual warfare so that's, woohoo, that's something, right? All right, do we need any more for Virgo? We need any more for, let's pull some moon cards. Oh, Virgo. I pull on Virgo energy all the time. My sun is not in Virgo. Neither is my moon. Neither is my ascending, okay? But for some reason, I just keep pulling this Virgo energy. It's fine. I like it. Virgos are funny. They're an earth sign. And earth signs... Sometimes I have a hard time believing in this kind of stuff. Because, you know, you're earth signs. Like, you want to see results, right? So when it comes to the supernatural, when it comes to the occult... With earth signs, it's really a toss-up. Taurus has the most difficulty believing. Taurus is the type of, per uh, the type of person who it's like... They pray and pray and pray for a sign. Like, oh, I just want to know, like, you know, just, I just want to know that, like, my grandma or my dad's still out there. And then, like, a butter, like, a yellow butterfly, like, somebody's grandma would love yellow butterflies. And, like, a yellow butterfly would come in and land on their desk. And Taurus would be like, well, it's just a butterfly. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's Taurus. Like, Taurus wants to believe, but they sabotage themselves. Capricorn believes in whatever the fuck works for them. 
So if Capricorn believes that selling their soul to Satan is going to get them to the top of the ladder, they'll fucking sell their soul and their grandmas and their kids and like they will sell that shit, right? Um, Virgo is interesting because Virgo acts like they don't believe, but they the fuck do. They do. And it's funny because Virgo rules the right hand of the occult is what I heard. All right. What do we got for Virgo? Yeah, Virgos are funny. They act like they don't believe, but they the fuck do. Oh, they the fuck do. <laughs> don't let your past hold you back. Sentimentality. Remember the story about the my friend with the computer? Don't let your past hold you back, okay? Whatever is lost, let it go. Don't try to recuperate anything. Bring love into the situation. Bring love into the situation. Especially love for yourself. You know you gotta love yourself. Right? Who the fuck else is gonna... What else we got for Virgo? Show the world the real you. You're pulling a lot of Aquarius energy, Virgo. It's time for you to think. It's time for you to be free. <laughs> it's time for you to be free. Body, mind, and soul. I saw there is to it. Yeah. Time to take action. You know, you'll know what that means. Whether it's in your heart, whether it's in your mind, you'll know what that means. Your commitment is being tested. I'm not sure what that means. If you're in a toxic relationship... This is, this is not what that means, okay? Your commitment is not being tested if you're in a toxic relationship or a toxic situation. Your commitment to yourself possibly is being tested. Commitment to your journey is being tested. Confidence is your key to success. Remember what I said? The ones on the other side don't fucking doubt. They do not fucking doubt their power. Not one fucking second. So don't you. Oh, God, don't you. And surrender to the divine. There's your power. Boom. 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 You radiate it. Boom. If I'm reading for a divine feminine, just remember that divine feminine always has the last laugh. I'm not playing about that. Divine feminine always gets the last laugh. So don't worry. Emotions are running high. Conclusions are within reach. And a personal issue reaches its resolution. There you go, my friends. All right. Um, I think that's all I've got for you for now. <coughs> it's been about 33 minutes. So I'm going to go check on my little guy. See if he needs any water. See if he needs any more uh, sunscreen. All that good stuff. So I hope this has helped. Um, I want to, uh, something to tell me we're not quite done yet. What more do we got for Virgo? We got something more for Virgo. I can feel it in my bones. I can feel it in my bones. This is your whole shit right now. The scarcity mentality. Am I going to get it? And do I need to take, I just take what 